Hello, everybody, and welcome. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday Inspiration. My name is Fernanda Torres, and I am here with Dr. Linda Marcus. I'm so excited to bring this topic today, Dr. Linda, because obesity is on the rise. We're seeing it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. We all, you and I know how it can affect someone's health and overall well-being. So bringing a little bit of attention to this matter, I think it's uh, during this time, it's very important. How are mm -hmm. you doing? Great, great. Happy Wednesday, my favorite day of the week. <laughs> happy, happy Wednesday. Yeah, you and I get to connect and just share some information with, you know, people watching the show or listening. So um, hopefully that at times they'll be able to see us, they can connect our voices and our face, but such a timely um, topic right now what we're going to cover today so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think people are going to walk away with a lot of a lot of tips and jewels and um, little nuggets that they can start applying right away so, absolutely yeah. yes so I want to start with some facts uh, diabetes is on the rise like I mentioned mm -hmm. previously mm -hmm. according to the World Health Organization um, obesity is on the rise of course and it has tripled actually since 1975, tripled since yeah. 1975. In 2016, more than 1.9 billion adults over 18 of 18 and older were overweight and over 650 million were obese. Now, 39% of adults 18 years or, or over were overweight in 2016 and 13% were obese. Now, if you switch that to the CDC, it says that from 1999 to two and 2000 through 2017 and 2018, the prevalence mm -hmm. of obesity increased from 30.5 to 42.4, and the prevalence of severe obesity increased for, from 4.7 to 9.2, so doubled mm, yes. in less than 20 years. Uh, prevalence of obesity was 42.4 in 2017. Obesity-related conditions include heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, some cancers, and some of those are totally, totally preventable, and they will mm -hmm. lead to premature death. Estimated annual medical cost of obesity was $147 billion in, 20, mm -hmm. in 2008. And the medical cost for people who have obesity was 1,429 higher per year than those that were of normal weight. Now, it does affect more some people from uh, some races more than others. It does mm -hmm. impact non-Hispanic Blacks more with 49.6%. So mm -hmm. one in two African-Americans are obese. And then followed by Hispanics, we are at 44.8. Non-Hispanic whites are 42.2. And then non-Hispanic Asians are 17.4. Last but not least, another statistic that I want to cover is overall men and women with college degrees have lower obesity prevalence compared with those of less education. So education and in a, in a sense, uh, economy does play a role in obesity yeah. as well. Mm. What do you think about that? Those are frightening numbers. I know when we, you know, we prepare for these shows and we do our research and just being in the midst of this every day with, you know, patients, it's, it's just out of control. No one really talks about it. And I say, you know, this is also an epidemic. And I think people are afraid to talk about it and nobody wants to hear, hey, you're fat, you need to lose weight. <laughs> I mean, that's just the, you know, there's no nice way to put, you know, to put it out there. It's mm -hmm. like a lot of people, um, they get offended when you try to talk to them about their weight. And it's just, um, it could be a sensitive topic, but at the same time, it's just like, the facts are the facts. If you we, you don't need the facts that you just stated, you know, to confirm that we have an obesity epidemic. Just walk, go to the grocery store, and, and you'll see, yeah, you'll see more bigger people than people that are within their weight range. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mm -hmm. like that, you know, years ago. I mean, I grew up in the '80s, and when I was in high school. Pretty much, I'd say 80% of the kids were in shape, and and now it's in 20% were maybe a little bit chunky, and there maybe one or two were severely obese, and now it's the other way around. So we, it's we it, it became like 
in a sense like the new normal you know yes. and i don't know how much you travel i travel quite a lot and mm -hmm. the difference of obesity here compared to a lot of other places in the yes. world is it's astonishing because sometimes and it happens to me too sometimes i'm here and i'm seeing it so much that it kind of starts resonating as the new normal yes. in a sense it's like oh that's what you see every day that's what you see yes. everywhere you know no matter where you go but then mm -hmm. you go to another place and you see everybody even if there is obesity it's not at the same rate yeah even the escalators even the doors yes. the bathroom the the stalls are shaped for someone smaller airplanes you know different yes. things so seeing the new the the normal here and seeing the normal somewhere else also puts things into perspective and makes you realize just how much things have gotten out of hand and out of control here absolutely and you're so right like when we travel outside of the country it's like i can american 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 it's just like you go to the airports and any of the international airports and it's like you can almost tell the difference between oh they're canadians they're americans mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and it is like that and in a lot of other countries there's mass transit systems so people are walking people are on their bikes you know um they'll have to walk to take the bus and 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 a lot of them are farming their own foods or there's natural um, farmers markets and so forth so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's definitely different but you're definitely. right it, it's become like the new norm here mm -hmm. and it's it's it no one really wants to talk about it but that's why you and I are you know we like to bring topics that need to be dealt with mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. but most of all but people to just take full responsibility I think that's the thing so you know so let's get into you know what are some things that people can start doing and applying right away um, I think one is really to um, look at this that you're not on a diet you're simply changing your eating template because diet has such a negative connotation negative mm -hmm. and when I think diet I think restrictions oh I'm gonna you're gonna put me on this diet no we're gonna put you on an eating plan with real food so that you can thrive it's mm -hmm. not a diet it's not you know I think that's the first thing is just like to just remove that and this is a lifestyle change the way that you see and the approach at exactly. it exactly yeah. it's not a diet okay and, and also to be um and to be consistent i mean i think consistency it's the it's the little things that you do on a daily basis that really add up you know mm -hmm. it's not just oh i'm gonna go to the gym you get the membership and you know like well i joined the gym okay great that's step one but how mm -hmm. many times did you go? The gym doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How many times did you go? Oh, I think I went like twice, <laughs> you know, but like the gym, if you are on a journey and you happen to lose all that weight, you don't go back to do the same things that, you know, that you used to do. Mm -hmm. So otherwise you're going to gain it back. And I know you're going to get into the mindset and identity of all that, but some real simple things um, that anybody can do is one, we consume over a hundred pounds of sugar a year, each American. I mean, I know I don't, someone else is consuming it for me, but I mean, <laughs> number one is reduce sugar. That's something simple that you can do is, is reduce sugar. A lot of people, I mean, they're, they're drinking sodas, candy bars, um, cookies, pastries. Um, and for, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that if, if you drink soda, you do gain about a pound a week. Mm, I, just, I, just by, just yeah. by drinking soda, even if you don't eat any other sugar yeah, or yeah. if you eat healthy, just by drinking that one uh, pound I believe week. that because a lot of the soda also ha has a fry, uh, the high fructose corn syrup, which also contributes to non-alcoholic fatty um, liver disease. So that's another issue, you know, mm -hmm. and as you were mentioning about obesity and all the ramifications of that. Um, yeah, even liver issues is another one. Um, so being consistent, making sure that, you know, you call this an eating plan, it's an eating template, it's a lifestyle, one reducing the sugar. And number two is all the processed food. I mean, we are consuming, um, 
lots of processed food and most of them are carbs, carb heavy carbohydrates mm -hmm. like your breads, your pastas, your cookies, your crackers, you know, and those are all in the middle aisles of the store. And so a lot of people, even if they just reduce that, you know, if they reduce the sugars and just stick to natural sugars in their whole form, you know, like fruits, you know, they that's nature's candy. Mm -hmm. Second, reducing the processed food and carbs, because almost all processed foods are high carbohydrates, you know, very high carb. Um, if you look at anything that's in a box, in a package, in, in, in the cereals and things that are, you know, foods that are, are um kind of proclaimed as health foods. If you look at the breakfast bars, they're loaded with carbs. You know, you look at even some of these nutrition sports bars, tons of carbs and sugar. Of course, anything that has a label and ingredients on there, just start reading and not just the outside can say, oh, healthy, organic. But when you start reading the labels, the nutritional labels, but also the nutrition, um, what the ingredients are, that's going to tell you a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, reducing um, the carbs. Um, another thing people can do is just start adding vegetables, because they're going to fill you up, you know, vegetables, but I always encourage patients not to eat like a salad dry, but a little bit of oil and vinegar because you need um, you need um, fats in order to uptake some of those fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. So you definitely want to add fat to um, to your salad. So just start adding greens, a variety of greens every every day. Try something different. You know, that's another thing people can do. You know, um, and of course when you add like the healthy fats, they help you stay satiated. So that's um, Another thing people can do, um, protein. We underestimate the power of protein because you know you need protein to heal your body. And when you start adding protein into your diet, <clears throat> it also helps you stay satiated full longer. And a lot of like clean animal proteins um, have fat and the healthy fats help you stay full. So those are some simple things that people can do. You know, it's not like we're even if we don't take anything away right now, if we just start adding mm -hmm. five to seven cups of vegetable a day, that might sound outrageous, but it really isn't, you know, um, that's some, you know, those are simple strategies and hacks that people can do. You know, let me ask a couple mm -hmm. questions about nutrition. Mm -hmm. How many calories or do you give a calorie maximum on patients of you depending on what they're trying to achieve or do you believe in you know counting I, calories, I, calories? You know, not a hundred percent because all calories are different 1200 calories of candy bars cereal cocoa puffs you know crackers is really different than 1200 calories of vegetables fruit nuts seeds and poultry and fish Mm -hmm. They're very, very different. So calories, I think only to a small degree, do they play a role because it's the type of calories that you're eating. You know, that that's what matters. Difference. Yes. And hormones are are the game. I say you have to understand your hormones because they really dictate weight loss. And hormones, of course, becoming the thyroid, your, you know, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, those all, you know, they also impact on um, your ability to lose weight. So I don't always look at that. I always try to get, give people a really basic, um, something so basic could be, you don't need to count calories for this, is if you have five to seven cups of green leafy vegetables every day, if you have three servings of protein that's the size of a deck of cards, or if it's fish, um, a checkbook. And if you have a couple cups of fruit, low sugar fruits a day, that's pretty basic right there in the adding like maybe five tablespoons of um, some healthy fats like avocado oil, olive oil, you can throw in some flax seeds some chia seeds, you know, you can throw olives in there. Those are some healthy fats. That's really, really basic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for that. One more question, because it always comes to me. And I'm sure if I have that question, a lot of other people may have it as well. When we're looking at a label, we go to the store and we're trying mm -hmm. to make a better choice uh, on the snacks or the foods that we're eating. 
what is a good healthy label look like? Okay. Well, if you have to read a label to recognize it, then you probably shouldn't be eating it. So like if you see an apple, it's like, oh, that's an apple. I already know what that is. You know, it doesn't have a label because there really there are no ingredients, just an apple. And I always look for the organic, which just, you look for the number nine on fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. When you're looking at labels, if you're say you're gonna buy, um, I don't know, there, there really aren't any healthy crackers or cookies or anything out there. Um, I would say stick to simple um, single ingredients. You know what pickles are, right? Olives, those are pretty easy. Celery, carrots, I mean, that's pretty simple to, to recognize. Um, and, and once again, I always look at what is the number one ingredient in there? Is it something that I normally have in my house? And if I don't, then I'm probably not gonna get it. The number one, food or ingredient, I believe, or one and two, I believe people should stay away from are sugar and anything mm -hmm. with gluten, the wheat, okay. oat, lime, barley. Okay. Gluten and, um, and, sugar. and sugar. Yeah. Now, if someone uh, listening to these says, well, what's gluten? What would be mm -hmm. your description of gluten? It's, it's a protein that's, you find it in wheat. Oats is highly contaminated with that. So it's wheat, oat, rye, and barley. Most all foods out there have wheat. You know, like people, uh, I had written something, I think on my page about people are going crazy with eating avocado toast for breakfast on wheat bread. I'm like, that spikes your glucose level probably as much as a candy bar. Why would you wanna have that first thing in the morning? You wanna mm -hmm. have something with some protein and fat to keep you satiated. And if you're gonna have more of your carbs, have them in the middle of the day. So, I mean, that eliminates a lot of foods when you think about that, you know, all the flour that people are eating, you know, the breads, the pastas, the cookies. If you go mm -hmm. grocery shopping, what do you see in a basket? <laughs> That's what people buy the most, absolutely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And especially mm -hmm. during this time um, um, of COVID because, you know, it does light up your brain in a different way, sugar and gluten, you get dopamine responses with that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a whole connection to that in big food, the big food industry, they know that. And so they market it to people so that the package looks pretty. It, it tells you, oh, this is healthy, it's natural, you know, it's low fat, and mm -hmm. it's quite the opposite of what it's saying it is but mm -hmm. that's how they make money <laughs> it's marketing it's just a strategy it's all marketing strategy and if you think about just by how things look right if you make a if you're selling crackers and you put them in a like a brown bag and you put like natural colors even if it doesn't say organic you you're gonna say oh the cookies are organic you know yes, yes. but on but of course yes. but if it if it's packed in a in a thing of Oreos or something that looks like an Oreo box, then it automatically gives the impression that it's got sugar, that it's got all kinds of things, you know, and that it's it's screaming for kids' attention, you know, the yeah. bright colors and the huge letters and everything else. So yeah. packaging plays a huge role. And just because it says something or it looks a certain way or it's packed packaged in a certain way doesn't mean that it's healthy. Exactly. Yeah. And but we've been programmed since we since we have been kids mm -hmm. with what we're watching on television or what our parents say, or if you there are certain jingles that people um, they hear it and they get a comfort with that, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it's it's done. It's strategically done for sure. And the way that it's targeted in younger audiences too. Yeah. once you see it and you start seeing TV shows for little kids or radio station for little kids, whatever uh, programs or YouTube mm -hmm. videos for little kids and the advertising, it's specifically targeted for, you know, for them to look at, to go to the store, find those items are at height, at their yes. height, you know, and so they are asking for these things to be bought. Yes. And, and you, it's all a strategy. Yeah. And you, you just said something that was just very, um, just enlightening for people when you go grocery shopping, all the cheap stuff is at what level? 
Mm -hmm. at eye level, right? Mm -hmm. So anything that's healthier or that's a little bit more, uh, more expensive might be at a higher shelf or a lower shelf. You know? yes. so everything is strategically packed. So when you go into that store, there was a lot of thought, any store. <laughs> everything, the way that it's designed, the fact that the milk and the eggs are all the way to the back of the store yeah. makes you walk all the way through all these aisles where the yeah. bread is and the gum and the candy and all yeah. these unhealthy things. So you can get to uh, maybe get some eggs you know, yes. for your breakfast the next day. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's all strategy. But I think when people, um, they realize that they have to bring on and you know, I think you can be, be able to explain this very well, is um, it's just you have to become a new person. You have to create a new identity. And it's like you're now the actress or actor that's walking into the store to you know to feed your body so that you can look a certain uh, a certain way and act a certain way mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. that person go through the oriel section mm -hmm. you have to identify yourself as a new person yes yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so um talking about weight loss another big mm -hmm. portion of it is exercise mm -hmm. right it's kind of like you, you need to be eating healthy, you need to be moving, and you need to be feeding yeah. your mind. Yes. It's a component of the three things. And I have uh, a grid. I, I'm going to try to show it as a picture. I have it on my phone. I took a picture of it. Okay. And it, I think when I saw it the first time, it was very powerful for me. If you guys uh -huh. can see it right there. Because what it's trying to show is mental the spiritual and emotional aspects of you shape your physical body, mm -hmm. basically. So what it's saying is how you feel, that's your emotions, mm -hmm. right? How you feel about life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about anything in general, how you think, so your mental aspect, mm -hmm. what thoughts are you having into your mind and how connected are you to yourself, your spiritual self, Mm -hmm. that will manifest again into how your body actually looks and any decision that you make in regards to food in regards to exercise in regards to anything it's based because of, of those conditions or those components mm -hmm. so that was pretty cool the first time i saw that and with the mental the spiritual and the um the emotional the spiritual aspect is that that you were mentioning just before how you identify yourself mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. th that's you at your core. What do you think about yourself? Do you think yeah. you are an obese person? You know, a lot of people refer to themselves as, oh, I'm just a fat chick. Oh, I'm, I'm you know, and they make these comments. So if you are associating yourself as obese, yeah. as overweight, as the fat chick or fat bone or thick bone or whatever it is, yeah. anything else like that, or you're joking how, you know, you're always, you know, the bigger person in the group, then that's your association, that's your identity. Yeah. And if you identify as something, your mind and your body, everything's going to do anything possible, possible to make sure that you are satisfied with your identity because you can't be anything that you don't associate with, right? Absolutely, yeah. So that is pretty huge. And that's changing powerful. that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Changing that identity, changing the way that you feel and the way that you connect with yourself and not saying anymore, I am fat or I'm overweight or I'm big or my arms are big or my thighs are huge or this or that or anything like that has to go out the door, right? And you need to start per perhaps communicating with yourself in a different way and change that identity. You are becoming a healthier person. You're making healthier choices. So you can, you don't have to say, oh, I'm thin or I'm slim or I'm normal weight. You don't have to say that, but you need to yeah. say something along the lines of I'm engaging or I'm jumping in a yeah. transformation, in a healthier journey, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Okay. That That is so powerful. I love that you're saying that because it gives people a way out to not succeed. Yes, it's about the commercials that they're playing in their mind every single day. I've always been the fat kid. I've always been like this since I'm a little girl. Okay, well, when did you decide that that little girl was going to become a big fat girl? Mm -hmm. 
an mm-hmm. older fat girl. Mm-hmm. You know, when did you decide that? So if you keep retelling that story, then yeah, is where the wherever the mind, whatever you tell you're sharing the mind, it's going to manifest in the body. Yes, so. absolutely, and it's it, it's all about identity, right? So mm-hmm. you need to start identifying yourself with better labels, yes. a healthier person, a, a, a higher energy person. Um, you know, I'm I'm eating healthier, and I'm associating yeah. with like more veg. I love vegetables. I love fruits yeah. and all these things. And little by little, I mean, it takes time, absolutely, yeah. because you're changing your whole personality, you're ch- you're changing your identity. Yeah. But the other thing is, just because if you've never in your life, if you've never been normal weight, right, it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you can't achieve it. A lot of people close that door at yeah. the opportunity of being able to lose weight because they were unsuccessful in the past. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at your past and you're saying, well, I've tried it many times and I've exercised and I've dieted and I've done this and I've done that and I've done acupuncture and all these things and <laughs> nothing's ever worked for me to lose weight, then nothing's ever going to work. Yes. Well, the thing is, you are different now than you were before. You're a different person making different decisions now. You have different tools now that you didn't have a year ago, maybe six months ago, maybe three months ago. So just yes. because it didn't work before, it doesn't mean that every single time that you're going to th- try something, it's not going to work. Yes. Yes. And in a sense, we need to become relentless, kind of like kids when babies are learning how to walk. Absolutely. Right. A baby doesn't start to walk and falls and says, well, this is too hard. I'm never going to try again. Oh, my God, this is impossible. Right. Yeah. No, a baby keeps trying and trying and trying and trying. And it doesn't matter if it takes a week or if it takes a day. The baby is going to try until the baby walks. So yeah. that's kind of what we need to do about health. No matter yeah. what, having a no excuse attitude, no matter what, I'm going to become healthier. Yes, that's that's what I would say to start with. I'm going Mm -hmm. to become a healthier version of me. How can I become healthier and little by little making more conscious choices in food, in exercise, in everything, in mental, in what you're fitting your mind, that's Mm -hmm. going to bring you wellness, right? Yes, absolutely. And I love how you talked about, you know, what you're saying out loud is just so powerful. And some people say, well, I don't like vegetables. And I'm like, I, or they'll say, I hate vegetables. I'm like, okay, well, maybe we can't go from you hate vegetables to I love vegetables, but maybe I'm learning to like vegetables. And I'm experimenting on how I can like them. I'm cooking them different. I'm learning different things. I, I, I I relate, you know, (laughs) I relate. You just got to get creative and you need to change at least not hating them. Just saying, a vegetable is a vegetable because it yeah. is, it's what it is. A it vegetable is, is a vegetable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't like I'm, it, it's your mind saying exactly. you don't like it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm learning to like that or I'm willing, you know, words like that that are more encouraging because sometimes they may not sound true, but, you know, um, I think if you make it just kind of gentle, you know, gentle in that perspective, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I love vegetables. Whereas before it's used to say, oh, I hate them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah, the mindset. And I don't know if you've seen this, but I tend to see this a lot as well. Like um, it's almost like they're they don't feel like they're worthy. People don't feel like they're worth it. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you don't feel like you're worth investing a thousand dollars into something that's maybe that more than likely is going to be bring back a huge return on your investment, but you're willing to spend thousands of dollars to make your car look cool when you're driving down the street with the cool rims, the new tires, the new car, whatever mm-hmm. the new wax job that you got or the detail, you'll spend the hundred, 200, 300, $400 on that. But then you say you don't have money to eat healthy. And it's so amazing (laughs) that you're actually bringing that analogy with a car because that's actually how I refer to that. And I think the same way, right? Yeah. Many people, if you think about it in this way, it may change the way that you associate with with Mm -hmm. your body. And this is the way that I see it. A lot of people, if, if you tell someone the first car that you have or the first motorcycle or bicycle, yeah. if you're ever, go- if you're only going to have one, 
for the rest of your life. The very first one that you buy is the one that you're going to have for the rest of your life. And that's the yeah. only means of getting around that you will ever get. You're never going to get a replacement. You're never going to get an upgrade. You're never going to get anything. So you yeah. only get one car for the rest of your life. How good are you going to take care of these cars? Yeah. That's a beautiful analogy. I love that. I mean, I what are you not going to do to yeah. take care of this car? You're going yeah. to clean it. You're going to change the oil. You're going to change. You're going to make sure that the car has everything at all times, because if the car doesn't run anymore, then what are you going to do? Right. How are you going to yeah. get around? Yes. If we think about our bodies the same way, because it is the same way. Literally, mm. we only get one body mm. and that's all we get. We don't get a replacement. We don't get a, a yeah. second edition. We <laughs> we get to go to the doctor and we get to do the maintenance and we get to do the labs and we get to do a lot of things with the body, but we only get one. We never get a replacement. Yeah. So changing that connection as if I'm going to only get a car, do I want to have a more, you know, a BMW that it's, you know, last model and runs smooth and it's amazing to to and it takes me from a to b like in 30 minutes or do i want to have and i'm sorry a piece of shed that it's not <laughs> going to be able to transport me from point a to point b and most yeah. people are going to say well i'd rather have a nice car so again it's the same relationship with your, with our bodies yeah. we only have one would we rather have a healthy body or an unhealthy yeah. body yeah. to go around and are you worth it i think a lot of it really has to it comes down to that that identity like and I know you and I do a lot of the um, the affirmations. They may be they may sound silly, but you know what? Talk to almost any successful person out there. They do, you do affirmations whether you're aware of it or not. Whether they're positive or not is a different story. Ours are mm -hmm. very intentional. They're very positive. I never look in the mirror anymore and say, oh, you look like shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, do that. good morning, honey. <laughs> You're, waking up. You're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, hey, it, it's my opinion. And so that all that really matters, you know, but it's just like, you know, but that's just people just I just wish they would understand that. Mm -hmm. It's just like you are an incredible human being and you are worth everything, everything every penny. you have to remind yourself no matter what anybody else says no matter what's going on in your life you are worth it in mm -hmm. your this is our vehicle for life mm -hmm. and we must honor it and take care of it i mean even from a biblical yes. perspective right what does mm -hmm. it tell us in there about our body being our temple Mm -hmm. The temple mm -hmm. of God and the spirit that, that, that what's in. So I just think yes. it's so important. And and the last thing, another huge point is it's nobody else's problem but yours. If your car breaks right. down and you got no other way to get to work, it's your problem. So it's nobody else's problem that you are unhealthy, that you're making unhealthy choices. A lot of people try to blame society try to blame what's at, in the stores they try to blame the commercials they try to blame the fact that the food is not grown organic or they try to blame the prices or they try to blame the government mm -hmm. they try to blame uh their spouses they try to blame <laughs> their wives because the wives cook they try to blame yeah. the mother-in-law they try to blame everything yes or by working and not having time to to work you know to work out uh, having a sitting job and not being able to get moving like if we make it a point to say from now on mm -hmm. i'm not going to give any more excuses mm -hmm. if i'm going to give excuses i would rather say i'm not doing it yes why would i commit to myself and then give myself excuses yeah <laughs> i mean yeah. it makes no sense right Absolutely. but that's what we all do we're like oh starting tomorrow i'm gonna work out and then the next day comes he's <laughs> like ah i'm too tired i'll yeah. start tomorrow so yeah. that's only affecting us and affecting our minds mm -hmm. if we change that and if we make ourselves accountable even if it's to say you know what i'm gonna do one sit, sit up just one one little one mm -hmm. and if you do it then then celebrate it okay that was that was okay you know i yeah. can do two exactly <laughs> it's not a big deal. exactly yeah and st start with what you have where you are with what you have with what you have and never be satisfied basically yes yes and continue to be i always say continue to be 
uncomfortable being comfortable or being could be comfortable with being uncomfortable mm -hmm. because that's where the growth is going to happen. And mm -hmm. I know, um, I mean, we can go on for hours about this, but I know we always want to try to keep it short, but you know, I think the important is going to be one to the, the consistency Two, this is a lifestyle. Um, three, this, this is the only thing that holds you back nothing else out there is holding you back and you nailed it beautifully like this is the only thing mm -hmm. that holds us back so that, that's everything else it up. <laughs> and having the knowledge about food and exercise the rest mm -hmm. is it's, it's just doing but mm -hmm. if we don't allow our minds to tell us that we can't or if we don't believe in ourselves then yeah nothing else Absolutely. matters yeah Great takeaways. So, and I have some information and people can listen to this again, but I mean, I have free eBooks um, on our homepage that you can download. Why aren't you losing weight? You go through our blogs. I mean, I have information there. This is what you do. We even have a sample eating plan. This is what you can eat for a whole week. So, you know, there's, um, there's information. It's like, how much do you want it? That's what it is. That's and, beautiful. Yeah. You know, so. That's beautiful. And you need to want it with your life because we're talking about your life. Yeah. And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Yes, it is. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. This was so amazing. I feel so happy to be able to share this information. It changed the, the way that I see health and body and, you know, weight and life and health in general. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to be able, able to bring it to you, you guys today. Yes, absolutely. I know we love this. All right. Thank you. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.